Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to take a few minutes here to go over <coughs> um, Lab 4, just to kind of give you a heads up on what's on here, make sure you don't miss any sections. It's This is a little bit longer and more involved than some of the other labs, so I want to make sure that we're all clear on um, what the expectations are here. So there are actually four sections to this lab, okay, it's pretty long, and I give you a heads up in the introduction to the um, this week. Um, and in the lab description to, that you're going to need some time to do this lab. This is going to take a little, probably longer than the others. So you want to start by downloading this Microsoft Word document that has everything on it. Okay. Immediately you want to change it to the, the proper name. So, I, you know, um, I know who submitted it after you're done. Um, and in fact, I would download all of the documents that are attached to lab four. So there's um, one, two, three, four, four documents, five documents, I think. You want to download all of them, put them in a, save them in a folder somewhere so you can have access to them. Okay, so part one, this is kind of a review of some of this week's content. So don't forget to define these terms here. Just type the inches in here, right? So most of this document, most of your work is going to be done on this very document, okay? Um, don't forget to answer these questions here, okay? Um, and then we talk a little bit about the sling psychrometer. This is a review from a lot of the content this week, but it does explain how a psych uh, sling psychrometer works. Okay. Um, so there's a, just a lot of explanation here, which a lot of it has already been provided in, in uh, prior parts of the lesson. So you want to go through all the lesson content first before you get to the lab, by the way. Okay. So there's some explanation here. All right. So part two. Make sure you fill in this chart, okay? And this is just practice for you, using uh, interpreting a sling psychrometer and a psychrometric chart. Notice that it leads you to this um, Sugar Engineers website, which will actually give you, um, you can punch in the numbers um, from your psychrometer, and it'll, it'll, it's basically a way to verify that you got your answers right. Um, so you interpret the sling psychrometer results, you know, the dry bulb and the wet bulb, Okay, look at your psychrometric chart, um, which is this thing right here. Hopefully you know what that, what that looks like by now. Okay, um, you do that. Where are we here? There we go. And then you check your answers with the website. Okay, and I actually gave you the answers here anyway. So you can, this is just to make sure that you know how to use it. Okay. Then you have some questions to answer here. Okay, so make sure you answer these questions. Now part three, normally what we would do is we would do this in class and you would actually take a sling psychrometer, which I have right here, and you would actually perform the psychrometric. So you would take this thing and you would do the old spin around, look at the dry bulb and the wet bulb, et cetera, et cetera. So just like all the videos said. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> it's, you know, as a online class, we can't do that. Um, so what I've done for you is I have recorded I've already recorded, so it describes how I did it here. But here are the um, the actual readings I got from the psychrometer, right? So, and this is where I was. So you're going to fill in this table, okay? So instead of you normally you'd walk around in groups and do this on your own, but instead I've gotten the values for you, uh, and so you're going to fill in this table, and then you are going to fill in based on your location using weather data, okay? Then don't forget, you see this big green lettering. Make sure um, that you add your chart. So you, when you fill in, you're going to use this psychrometric chart to interpret the data f that I gave you, okay? And then you can either you can make a digital copy of this and use like whatever um, you know, whatever uh, software you want, Microsoft Paint, I don't know, whatever you're able to do, and draw the lines on here, okay? And then you can copy and paste them here if you want to or you can save them on a separate uh, file or do them by hand and then you know do uh, the copy them uh, photocopy them like you would another assignment and submit it along with the assignment just remember you have to submit those charts in order to receive credit for this part of the lab okay because I have to know that you how you interpreted your chart okay then you have a bunch of questions to answer so Again, don't forget to answer those. Just type in your answer below, and this is like analysis based on the previous stuff. 
Then part four, this is a new little wrinkle. Um, and so what I've done here is I have downloaded, <coughs> excuse me, uploaded a couple of data logger files. Um, so data loggers are, there's a bunch of different kinds, but this is one of them. This is what I actually used for some of the information in, that I gave you. And this little thing is um, a couple hundred bucks and it'll capture, um, this one is, you probably can't read that, but it says relative humidity, I think it's backwards anyway, temperature and light levels. So this thing will capture, um, you can tell it how, how um, frequently to take readings from a second to you know ha whatever every day um, and it'll just take a reading at that time at that time interval um, and then it actually captures and holds on to it and what's really cool is you can then capture it over any period of time so you'll see on the lab it's a couple of weeks of data uh, and you can upload it into a chart and then you can analyze so it's really useful for analyzing what's going on in a building when you're not around Right, so I can I use these on energy audits. I put them in a room that I think might be misusing energy, or I just want to know how the energy and humidity levels and light levels and so forth. Um, and I'll leave it in there, and then I'll download it, and then I can see what was happening um, when I was not around. So I've uploaded um, a couple of files from a data logger, from real real. This is real data um, from an from an audit we. We've done a, uh, some audits that we've done in the past, and you are going to um, there's a, a free software that you'll download called Hoboware, which is my favorite name for a software ever, but it is called <laughs> Hoboware. And um, you download Hoboware; it's free, it's safe, and then then you can interpret the files that I um, uploaded, and then you'll you'll kind of look at them. You'll see you'll see why they're useful. And then you just make sure you answer these questions, right? So you got a couple of questions down here. And then you will um, need to copy and paste the charts that come up from the Hoboware below. Okay? Um, again, you, in order to get credit for these questions, you have to paste those charts. So just don't forget to do that. Okay, so that's the overview. Um, hopefully you have a good sense of what you'll be getting into. Uh, this is a really interesting lab, I think. You do a lot of real-world application type stuff here. Um, you know, using a, We use equipment to get real data, and you get to interpret that data. So I think this one's pretty fun. Um, it is going to take you a little while, though, uh, so definitely get a head start on this. Um, but that's about it. Um, hopefully this is helpful, and um, of course, if you have any questions, send, send me an email. We can set up a meeting, um, and I'm also happy to uh, discuss this during the open session this week. All right. Have a good week, folks.